Hello, fifth grade at home learners. All right, today's lesson is about separating mixtures. If you follow the instructions on the Canvas page for today, then you will already have your slides set up with our table that has five rows. And you will know that the mixtures we are trying to separate are these shown here. So this one is water with marbles. This one is salt and pepper. Uh, if your parents are within earshot and they just started doing a funny dance or singing weirdly, don't worry about it. They're fine. They just took a little time travel back to the 90s and they'll be fine. It's just because I said salt and pepper that they're going to be like that. All right. And then this one is uh, gravel and cork. So this is, we've seen cork. We had cork that was a wine bottle stopper. Uh, but this is cork that came from a bulletin board that was getting old and I just kind of crumbled it up. And then finally we have some sand and rocks. So the rocks are like this size. Amazingly, they're hiding down in there. Um, and the sand is the, of course, the powdery stuff and the tiny rocks are actually considered part of the sand as well. So we're trying to figure out how could we separate these and we're going to use the fact that they have some different physical properties to help us with that separating. So we also need some tools to help us. So let's see what our tools that are available to us are. So we might need a jar of water. We might need a spoon. We might need a coffee filter. We might need a strainer which is like what you would use in the kitchen for like, if you cooked noodles, you can pour the water in the noodles through it and the noodles get stuck. Um, or, and, and we can use a bowl. Uh, occasionally we'll need one for dry ingredients and we have another one um, for wet ingredients as well. So uh, let's just get going. All right, so I don't remember what order I put these on on your slide. So we're just gonna, go in an order that seems to make sense to to my brain so we're going to start with the water and marbles so we need to think of some physical property that is different for the water than the marbles so um you know if we were talking about relative density uh the marbles go to the bottom so maybe that could help us because it's it's more dense than the water, but in this case, that's not what it is. So uh, let's think, solubility. Well, water can't really dissolve. It is the thing that dissolves stuff. So it's our solute, but hmm, goodness, what could we do? Well, I think I know how we could separate these. I think the strainer is the way to go. Um, so let's, let's give it a shot. So let's, you're not gonna be able to see from the side, so it's not as satisfying to you guys, is it? was in class probably but if i pour the marbles and the water into the strainer of course the marbles are up here in the strainer and the water is down in the bowl so i have separated the marbles from the water so that was our goal was to separate so in the column for marbles and water how we separated we would say strainer. And if you're wondering how to spell strainer, it's S-T, then the word rain, R-A-I-N, and then E-R. So strainer. Uh, and then what physical property was that? Why did the water go through, but the marbles did not go through the strainer? So hopefully you were thinking about the fact that the water is a liquid and the marbles are a solid. And so what do we call that state of that uh physical property. I just kind of gave it away, didn't I? Um, it is called state of matter, or you can call it physical state, but that gets a little confusing. Uh, students tend to confuse physical state and physical property, so we're just going to call it state of matter. So that is what you would put for the physical property that separated water and marbles. Okay, let's move on to another one. This one's kind of similar. This is the rocks and the sand, um, believe it or not, there are four rocks in there, although it doesn't look like it. They're hiding down in there. Um, so how do you think we could separate those from each other? What physical property do they have that's different? Well, this one's kind of tricky because it's actually not one of our like scientific uh, physical properties that we've recently learned. 
So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the rocks and the, the sand and we're going to pass them through the strainer. All the sand falls through to the bottom. A couple of the larger pieces of sand end up in the uh, strainer, but it's very easy for me to just use my fingers to pick out the rocks from that point. And so what was it that caused parts to stay in the strainer and parts to go through to the bottom? This time it is not physical properties. So, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not state of matter. Uh, neither of those are liquid. They were both solids. So in this case, what let one thing go through and the other not go through? Uh, in this case, it was size. So for how we separated rocks and sand, we are going to say... Um, Strainer, again, spelled the same way, so you could copy-paste if you're being all efficient over there. And, of course, our physical property that allowed us to separate in this case was size. The rest of them will be back to our physical properties that we have been studying in class. That one was a little bit of a, an oddball one. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's go with... Let's go for the cork and the gravel. So nowadays when you have an aquarium, a lot of times what is in the bottom um, to kind of act like a filter is uh, sometimes glass beads or sometimes those plastic crystally looking beads. But back in my day, it was uh, aquarium gravel that looked like this and you could get it in all kinds of colors. And I don't know why I've just always been fascinated by it. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, but anyway, so this is just basically rocks that are painted. And this is cork that is uh, like from a bulletin board. It would behave the same way that our wine bottle stopper cork would behave. So try to think which physical property is it that would be different for cork than it would for aquarium gravel. Hopefully I'm going to be able to soak up that water with a coffee filter. I don't know if that's going to work. Not really, but I can at least spread it around. Okay, um, so I'm hoping that you thought of something. I don't know if you did, but I'm going to pour my cork and my aquarium gravel some of it is really not wanting to leave the cup, into a jar. And I don't know how well you can see from the screen. I'm going to try not to spill. But the bottom is where all of the gravel is located. And the top of the jar is where all the cork is located. So what physical property is that that causes the cork to float and the gravel to sink? Hopefully you're saying relative density. So the how we separated this one is we added water and the physical property that allows us, allows us to separate it was relative density because the cork has what kind of density? It's floating, so I hope you're thinking low density and the aquarium gravel or rocks have high density, they sink to the bottom. All right, I'm gonna use my spoon to kind of fish out the cork and try to get it back into the cup. Hopefully I can do something similar. Well, I guess I don't really need to. I'll just set it aside for now. That may be okay. All right. All right. Next up, because we've done three now, is let's go for iron filings and sand. So this is just little sand. I made sure to pick out all the, the bigger rocks that we saw with the other one uh, and iron filing. So iron is just pieces of iron that have been kind of sawed off. It's kind of, the, a file kind of looks like a cheese grater. You know how if you take a block of cheese and put it on a cheese grater, it kind of shreds it to ribbons. It's the same type of thing, but it's tough enough that it can, it's tougher than iron. And so it is able to break the iron down into little bitty pieces. Um, so I want you to think about the physical properties of iron and sand and what, it, what physical property do they have that is different that would allow us to separate this mixture. I'm actually going to separate this mixture without even opening the baggie, which is actually kind of a magic trick. So you're welcome for the free little show. Okay. Um, hopefully you realize that iron we talked about 
uh, in a very specific um, way. It's one of the two metals that has this certain physical property um, known as magnetism. So if I use this magnet and I pass it over all of my mixture, I should have the ability to attract the iron, but not the sand. It's probably very difficult to see on camera, but all the sand is in the bottom of the baggie now, and all the iron is up here at the top, attracted to the magnet. I'm so sorry, that is very hard to see on camera, but all of my, um, all my iron filings are up here at the top. Hopefully you'll be able to see as I pull the magnets away and the, uh, the iron falls back down um, what is going on. So maybe you can kind of see now that all the iron is over here because that's where the magnets were um, and the, all of the sand is not because it is not attracted to the magnet whatsoever. So the way we separated the iron from the sand was we used a magnet and then the of course, physical property that allowed that was magnetism. So please update your slide to show that. All right, we've got one more, and this is the toughest one. Um, of course, it's better to learn this if you have to like struggle and figure this out, but um, at least you will know it and know that this is how it works. So we've got salt and pepper. Can you think of a physical property that is different for salt than it is for pepper? Um, so we started in class by pouring some of the salt and pepper mixture into a jar. Um, some of the pepper stays at the top, some of it goes to the bottom, some of it's kind of floating around in the middle. All of the salt dropped to the bottom. And we're just gonna give it a good old stir. And something has happened, and I bet you know what, because we've already talked about solubility, and we know that salt is soluble, which means it's dissolving in this water. But pepper is not soluble, which means it's not dissolving in the water. Problem is we haven't separated it yet. The salt is still together with the pepper. If I were to take a sip of this, which no way, um, I would taste the salt and the pepper as well as the water. So I need to somehow still separate them. This wasn't enough to separate them, but it is definitely um, going to help. So, hmm. I guess we're back to using some of the other equipment that we had available. So I'm going to grab the wet strainer and the wet bowl. And I'm going to set it up here. And I'm going to take one of these coffee filters and place it right in the strainer. And now I'm going to pour my mixture of salt and pepper through the coffee filter and through the strainer. Now, some of my pepper did cling to the inside of the jar. That's fine. Um, it is away from the salt, so that's fine. But some of it did come out of the jar. And what is happening here? So where is the salt compared to where the pepper is located? So all of the pepper is located in this filter. If I take the filter out, all my pepper is gone. And all my salt is in the water, but it's dissolved so we can't see it. But technically they are separated. All of my pepper is either in the jar or in the filter, which is now in the jar. And all of my salt is in the bowl. So we were able to successfully separate the salt from the pepper. So how did we do that? It was three steps and you're gonna to need to put them all on the how we separated. So first we, added water and stirred, well, added water, stirred, and then we used a strainer. So we added water, stirred, and either strained or filtered, however you want to say that, to separate the salt from the pepper. Now, what physical property is that that lets the salt dissolve, but not the pepper? Of course, that is solubility, and so we'll need to update our slide with that. All right, I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you at